Hello, and thanks for checking out this video from Placing Culture, which along with various other tutorials is also located at placingculture.blogspot.com. My name is David Meek, I'm currently a doctoral candidate in the Anthropology Department at the University of Georgia. Through this blog, I try to provide some insights into how evolving cartographic technologies and methods are increasingly mediating our understanding of the myriad interrelations between culture and place. This screencast is the first of a series that's intended to provide an introduction to GIS. It's primarily for social scientists, but I think it should be relevant to anyone who has an interest in learning about GIS, whether you have a background in geography or not. As a social scientist, you probably have heard mention of GIS. Maybe it was at a presentation, or perhaps from a colleague. For those of us who do not have a background in geography, this thing called GIS likely seems not only confusing, but also probably daunting. If you're just starting to explore the world of GIS, it's quite possible you're asking yourself, what is GIS? And probably more importantly, what can I do with it? Through this ongoing series of screencasts, I'm going to introduce you to GIS from both a theoretical and a practical side. By this, I mean that each lesson will be devoted to one topic and will consist of two screencasts, one exploring some theoretical issues related to GIS, and the next will be a hands-on lesson where we take those previously discussed issues and learn actual GIS techniques that revolve around them. So what is geography? Well, to take just a glancing look, geography has been described as a study of why, what, is where. For our purposes, such a description is perfect because as social scientists interested in spatial data, this is essentially the question we are asking. What are the spatial characteristics of the phenomena that we study? And why are the spatial characteristics present? Additionally, that brief description of geography is perfect because it leads you directly to the next thing you're probably wondering about, information. There are three general types of geographic information that we frequently come into contact with. The first is the location and extent of a feature. What this information describes is where a feature can be found, i.e. its location, and what area does it occupy, in other words, its extent. Secondly, we have the characteristics of a feature. In GIS, we refer to the characteristics of a feature as its attributes. Attributes can be really anything from the population of a city to a village's agricultural production to a person's oral history. The third type of characteristic of spatial data is the relationships between features. So we now know that we can ask some really interesting questions from a geographic perspective, i.e., why, what, is where. We have also learned that some basic characteristics of geographic information. But it's probably still unclear as to what a system is. So let's tackle that obvious question that's quite possibly still rumbling in your head. What is a GIS? Well, to begin with, GIS stands for Geographic Information System. A geographic information system is a combination of hardware, software, data, and an individual. GIS is frequently seen as synonymous with map making, but map making is obviously not new. While GIS does allow one the tools to make maps, that is really just the tip of its potential. GIS provides tools through which you can capture data, manage, manipulate, analyze, and represent it in a map, graphic, or other report-like form. Yet what makes GIS really special, in my opinion, is that it is a system which provides the frameworks through which you can integrate vast and varied types of spatial data, analyze them, and ask and answer very advanced spatial questions. But perhaps we're starting to get ahead of ourselves. Well, if you're asking yourself what you can do with GIS, the answer is that the sky is really the limit. In large part, what you could do with a GIS is a function of what kind of data you work with. People frequently think of GIS as a quantitative system, and that largely is true, but it doesn't need to be so, and there is really a lot of exciting work being done that consists of largely qualitative data. So to get a better idea of the possible horizons, let's look at a few examples. So say your work is in medical anthropology, and you're interested in the relationship between people with diabetes, those with depression, and the proximity of their access to parks or other green spaces. Sounds like an interesting question. Well, you might be employing some sort of survey, perhaps a Likert measurement device. These types of data lend themselves perfectly to being spatially visualized because they can be spatially located, i.e. you could have a database in which a person's scores on the Likert scale are attached or joined 
in GIS parlance to the uh, the block the apartment that I live in. Perhaps you want to look at the frequency of people with diabetes as a function of their proximity to those breathing spaces. Well, that's easy enough. So by using symbology, which we'll get into later, uh, symbology is an inherent part of your data. You can visualize these phenomena and analyze the potential relationships. Perhaps in looking at the data, you're beginning to think you've noticed something interesting, perhaps a potential relationship you'd like to further explore. Employing a mixed methods approach, you collected a significant amount of textured ethnographic data from interviews and participant observation. So as part of your spatial database, you can integrate these, these uh, qualitative data into the GIS as well, analyze them, and use those qualitative data to inform your larger analysis. So that's just one example. I really believe that spatial data are underexplored in the social sciences in general, and that nearly every researcher could, if they were interested, use these systems to help visualize their phenomena and further their analyses. If you're still thinking that this GIS stuff is only for those doing environmental work, I'd like to ask you to think again. Whether you're an economic anthropologist working with remunerations, a political scientist looking at changes in voting patterns, or a religious historian exploring pilgrimage routes, your work as a spatial component. If you're still somewhat confused about what this GIS business is all about or are still left wondering what you can do with it, I'd say please check out the next screencast where we'll take a more practical tack and interview a religious historian who is just getting started with GIS. We'll look at how she started exploring some of these questions and what special spatial direction she's now taking her research. That's it for today. My name is David Meek and you can contact me at dmeek at uga.edu or visit Place and Culture at placingculture.blogspot.com. Thanks again for checking out this screencast.